former beauty queen and cheerleader Lindsay Shiver married her college sweetheart, Robert Shiver. He was a football player at Auburn and came from a family with lots of wealth. Life was good. The good-looking young couple had three boys and lived in a $2.5 million home in Thomasville, Georgia. They flew on his family's private jet and had a vacation home in the Bahamas. And that's where the story turns bad. Lindsay allegedly had an affair with a younger man who lived on the islands and worked at Grabber's Bar. Robert found out about it and filed for divorce. Things got nasty, and that's where this story turns really bad. Lindsay, along with her Bahamian boyfriend, are accused of soliciting a hitman to kill Robert. Lindsay and the other two men connected to the alleged murder plot are out on bond in the Bahamas and were back in court today getting ready for trial. Tonight, the latest from the courtroom plus will take a look at the evidence and dive into what a criminal trial looks like in the Bahamas. Is it easier or more difficult to get convicted? All this as we continue our investigation into the love triangle murder plot in paradise. I'm Vinny Politan. Thank you so much for joining us here tonight on Closing Arguments. And this hour, uh, literally diving into a big, big story that is part in the United States and a big part down in the Bahamas. The Bahamas. I mean, that's paradise down there. I don't know if you've ever spent time down there. I spent, uh, I took a couple trips down there. Just amazing. The beaches, the water, the people, everything. It's just a, an amazing, amazing place to spend time. Court TV has spent time down there before this case. Remember Anna Nicole Smith. Uh, a lot of that took place down in the Bahamas. Producers and, uh, and, and correspondents fighting to cover it. But at, at the end of the day, the Bahamas is a beautiful place to be. It really is. And for Lindsay Shiver and her husband Robert, I mean, they were having an amazing life together. It, it seems, right? You, you look on paper, this is the way you would draw it out, right? Football hero, cheerleader, uh, pageant beauty, they get together, uh, money's not an issue, his family's wealthy, he's doing really well, they've got three little boys. I mean, that, if you, if you had to draw it out, how you would want to live your life, I mean, how many people would want to be in that position, right? Were you, were you married, your sweetheart, you didn't have to worry about money. You lived in a beautiful home in a beautiful part of the country, private jet, vacation home in paradise. And I know there's more to life than material things. And what I'm describing is more than material things, right? You, you, you met in college and then let's, let's build something together. And then you bring into the world three amazing little boys. What else could you want? What, what, would, what, would, what would it take for you to trade that all in? To just walk away from that? What would it take? A Bahamian lover? That was the answer, apparently, for Lindsay Shiver. There he is. He's a good-looking guy. A little young. A little young, Lindsay. Uh, but that was it. Well, there may have been things happening at home, right? There may have been problems. Lots of couples have problems. Uh, but you've got three children. Maybe, you know, you, you take a step back and figure out how to work it out. And then if you can't, then you kind of nicely separate and do everything in the best interest of the children. That's not how this one was playing out, though. They were still married. They started hooking up with this guy down in the Bahamas at the vacation home after flying down on the family's private jet. And when I say the families, I mean the Shivers, like Robert and his parents, like they're the ones with the money. She's the one that married into the money. And then, you know, I guess she's hanging at Grabber's Bar. Um, so let's take a step back. Remember that amazing life that I described? right? Beautiful, sprawling estate in a beautiful part of the country in Georgia. 
vacation home in paradise, right? Well, now she could be spending a good portion of her adult life in a Bahamian jail. Whoa! That's a, that's a little shocking, right? To go from all that to that? Why? Why? Now, they haven't proven the case yet, but let's just for a moment, for a moment, say that she did this. What would go through someone's mind? Like, I'm gonna risk living there rather than just get a divorce and get whatever you get in a divorce, shared custody, take care of the kids. No, I'm going to try to kill him so I get all the money and I'm the rich widow with my Bahamian lover? That's what prosecutors are saying here. So you're, you're actually gonna, you're gonna risk that instead of just getting, I don't know, half and shared custody of your children? Instead you want it all? But there's a chance you could end up there. That's what this story is about. I, 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 I still don't understand how anyone could come to that conclusion. Now, they haven't proven the case yet, right? We're, we're still at the point where she's charged and accused, as is her boyfriend and the alleged hitman that they um, were soliciting. So, back in court today, big, big day. So let's go to paradise. Court TV crime and justice correspondent Matt Johnson joining us live from Nassau, Bahamas. Matt, great to see you tonight. Yeah, I'm a little jealous. I'm a little jealous you're down there in, in the Bahamas. <laughs> It, it, you, I know you're working, you're working hard, but you're still in the Bahamas, so th that's nice. So today... Well, nicer weather from the last time, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> so now, now everyone's back in court. People are out on bond, right? So uh, what happened inside that courtroom today? Yeah, Vinny, nice to see you. And it's been some big moments here today in the Bahamas with this case, this murder in paradise plot. Lindsay Shiver, it started out with a dramatic entrance by the heiress there, the multimillionaire now accused of trying to kill her husband. I want to show you video of her walking in today, walking into court, and compare that to July when she was being released from Fox Hill Prison here in the Bahamas. Um, stark contrast, uh, you can see that she was wearing some labels today. She was also wearing that white jumpsuit. She didn't have those handcuffs, but she did have some gold bracelets. Now, once inside, a big moment, all three defendants entered their not guilty plea. That includes Lindsay Shiver, that includes her lover, Terrence Bethel, and Farron Newbold, who is the accused hitman in all of this. And then another big moment. We're handed a statement by her attorney where she pledges, declares, her innocence, and in part it reads this. Lindsay is innocent and the evidence will clearly demonstrate her innocence. She continues to face the legal process with complete transparency and honesty. Lindsay is looking forward to getting this ordeal behind her. And most importantly, she is looking forward to being reunited with her young children who have been without their mother for many months. Now, Shiver appeared nervous at times. I happened to notice that. I was seated right behind her, right next to her. Uh, she was talking to her attorney. She was whispering with him and she was kind of making a shaking gesture that she was a little bit nervous and he said hey just do one thing all you have to remember today is say not guilty and she said I got it all right so the, the children I think are a big part of this whole story and you know three kids without their mom that's tough stuff but if mom is trying to kill dad you know it is what it is so um, did you ask her have an opportunity to ask her about her children today yeah, we, I was trying to talk to her about her kids. I know that that's a major issue for her right now. Um, she mentioned the children in that statement through her attorney that they haven't uh, been able to see each other face to face. She has rights to see the kids, but they haven't visited her here in Nassau. Now, um, before she came into court today, I asked if she had a message for the children. Uh, here's her response or not response. You be the judge. Lindsay, any message for the boys? Have you been able to see your kids? How you been holding up?
All right, so no word yet whether or not she's going to see them over the holidays, but we do know that uh, she's really hoping to change her uh, release requirements. Right now, she's required that 8 p.m. curfew, not allowed to, to leave the country. She's hoping to change that because she wants to visit her children in the United States, Vinny. And, and that's a tough thing, right? To Because she could come back and go to the United States and then sort of like disappear into the wind. So I'm sure... The folks down in the Bahamas are aware of the fact that she has access to some money and you don't want to let her go necessarily because then you've got to get her back to stand trial for all of this. So what, what's the, how, do we know how that arrangement is working out with the kids now, like where they are and is there any way right, that so she could potentially see them? Well, she's really hoping, and, you know, that's the only thing that she said to me um, outside of court when I asked her, you know, have you, do you have a message for the kids? She just kind of looked down and said it's been tough, it's been hard. And what we understand in through our sourcing is that uh, Lindsay, by all accounts, was planning to visit with her children through her mother. Her mom was going to help facilitate those visits here on the island and help bring her kids here, but that hasn't happened. Right now, the kids, all three boys, are with her husband, Robert Shiver, and he's been spending time with his new girlfriend. That's Savannah Chrisley from Chrisley Knows Best, and uh, she actually talked about their arrangement and, and about their relationship on her podcast. Take a listen. I spilled the beans and was like, yeah, I'm dating someone who their wife, like, tried to murder them. It's such a complex situation of someone that, yes, like, filed for divorce in the first half of the year. I would never date a actively married person. I want to make that very clear. My whole situation, it's given me so much respect for single dads because also I'm, like, seeing it firsthand. And so when it came to her relationship, Robert's new relationship with his new girlfriend, Savannah Chrisley, I tried to get a reaction from Lindsay on that, on that new point. And uh, here's that interaction. Any reaction to Robert and Savannah? So no comment from Lindsay Shiver, but I found it very interesting that Savannah Chrisley was following all the developments today online as we were posting them. She was watching our coverage. How do I know this? Well, I was posting updates on social media. I don't follow Savannah Chrisley, and I noticed that she was actually viewing all of my stories that I was posting about Lindsay today. That's fascinating. Now, Robert wasn't there, was he, the, the alleged victim in all of this? No, we haven't seen him, and by all accounts, he, he still has the children, and he plans on spending the next couple holidays with them and with his new girlfriend. We know that they spent Thanksgiving together. Now, but now he has, right? So, so is she, do we know if she's staying at their vacation home or if she's staying somewhere else? Like, how does all that work? So um, there were reports that she had been robbed. Remember, she was moved over to Cable Beach. She had a rented unit there. Um, it was a gated community, but then there were the reports that she had been robbed. So she went to local authorities here last week and she asked for a change in her bail, um, change of address, and that was granted. So now that's what she's hoping for is another change come next week on the 13th when she's supposed to be back in this courthouse and asking to be able to travel to the United States. Um, but what we do know is the other big bombshell today is that this is moving quickly to trial. Come next year, March 4th through 8th, that is the trial date, Vinny, for all three. That's fast. That is fast. Um, and they look like you know, a one-week trial is what they're... And it sounds like a one-week trial. I think that's what it would be here in the United States. It's not terribly complicated, I don't think, unless there's more that we don't know about. Um, how about in court? Um, how did how did they appear in court? Was there any sort of interaction among the defendants, in, including the two lovers? Um, how did all that play out? 
That was really interesting, and that's something that we were paying close attention to, because remember when we were here when they were asking for her to be released from Fox Hill Prison when she was still in handcuffs, uh, the other two, her boyfriend and the alleged hitman, they had already received bail, so they had their ankle monitors and they were wearing suits in court, and Lindsay had brushed up against her boyfriend, they were whispering, they were giggling, almost like high schoolers, and um, it was quite inappropriate for her for court, right? We don't usually see that. Again, no cameras in there, but um, they're also not supposed to speak with one another as co-defendants, and they were quite a bit in July. Today, it was very different. Lindsay and the co-defendants really talking to their attorneys. Um, there was a little bit of whispering, a little bit of glancing at each other, but you had the alleged hitman in between Lindsay and her boyfriend the whole time. And then you heard my interaction, you know, asking them uh, if they still love each other. If we can play that. Lindsay, are you guys still in love? Do you still love Lindsay? So the alleged hitman, Newbold, sitting in between the two lovebirds. So maybe, Vinny, this is uh, trouble in paradise. A little, a little bit of trouble. Okay. Um, this is uh, fascinating stuff. And, and how about the, the scene at the courthouse, right? So we know how this story is playing here in the United States because she's American, the victim is American. Um, how about down there in the Bahamas? Is this a big story or are they kind of like, ah, it's Americans, who cares? So there is local news here on the island. And um, remember, access is very different than what we see in America. We're very transparent, or at least we try to be. That's what we try to bring you. But um, no cameras in the courthouse. Um, you see a lot of print reporters here. There is some local TV stations, and they were outside along with us. And some international media was here. Um, a little bit less than what we saw in July, but definitely still a big story. And I'm seeing a lot of folks with uh, wigs on. What's, what's going on? What happened today? We're looking at that video right now. Okay, so, right, so um, that was something that was taking place. I don't know what the event was, but there was flowers, there was lots of hugs and pictures, um, and it was handling, that was taking place in another courthouse, um, but it's a great example of how things look here and how they feel. It's very different. It feels very British. Um, all of the attorneys, they wear robes, and the judges, they wear the white wigs. So that's just a little glimpse into the life here. Fantastic. All right, Matt Johnson staying with us. We've got a lot more to get to, including the evidence in the case. What is the evidence um, that we believe prosecutors have here to try to prove this case? Plus, coming up next hour. In Bardstown, Kentucky, mother of five, Crystal Rogers, disappeared in 2015. She has never been found, but her boyfriend, Brooks Houck, has been arrested along with a second man, Joseph Lawson. And tonight, a third arrest, Joseph Lawson's father. We have the details. This is Steve Lawson. He's uh, seen what works for me. So what did I, I forgot, what did I, what did I tell you? You told me that you would call, uh, what's her name, Katie or whatever, she had her handles all that. Crystal. Crystal, okay, I apologize. Yeah. And, uh, you said she handles all that. Charlie Adelson faces sentencing for his role in the murder of his former brother-in-law, Dan Markell. He was the big man who was going to solve his little sister's problem, make his mom proud, and get away with it. See the latest chapter in the Adelson saga unfold right here on Court TV. From the day I learned about Dan's death, I experienced a life sentence. The sentencing of Charlie Adelson. Live coverage Tuesday, 2-1 Central on Court TV. So for the last three weeks, maybe longer, she's had her couple's trip planned with her boyfriend to go to Key West. Okay, but I'm, she just said you're going. I, that was to Key West. Yeah, they don't. I'm taking my kids, my three boys, to the Bahamas this morning. Our kids. Our kids. Yesterday, she sent a message saying that she's going to 
change her plans and now get on the airplane with me and the kids to go to Bahamas. Um, to and when we land, land, she's going to go to her boyfriend. Elsewhere. And me and the kids are going to our house. And I told her I'm not supporting that. And you're not getting on the airplane. That can mess with the kids' heads. And it's just something we're not going to do. Things a little tense in that body cam, right? And that's uh, at the uh, Lindsay, home, Lindsay and Robert's home in Georgia. And this is before the alleged murder for hire plot, but very close in time to everything being hatched here. Um, so what is the evidence of this alleged murder for hire that we've been talking about? Let's go back to Matt Johnson in Nassau on the Bahamas. So, Matt, I know that they're not very forthcoming with information down in the Bahamas. What, what is out there about what this evidence uh, may be against Lindsay Shiver, her lover, and the alleged hitman? Right, Vinny, we're looking into that, and you're right. You know, things are very different. It's a, it's a different country. Um, records are not public, no cameras in the courtroom. But here's what we know. All three are facing the same charges. Conspiracy to commit murder. And that's for Lindsay Shiver. That is for her alleged boyfriend and the alleged hitman. And we also know that the charges center around text messages that all three were sending each other. And Shiver was sending text messages to her boyfriend saying that she wanted uh, him to kill her husband, Robert, allegedly. And she was sending him pictures of her husband, Robert, so that they would know what he looks like. Um, this all happened around that same time when we showed that clip, you know, that body camera video from Thomasville, Georgia, when they're standing in their driveway and they're fighting over use of the private plane. And Robert is saying, I own the plane. I don't want her on it with the kids. She's just wanting to get on the plane to go see her boyfriend in the Bahamas. Well, shortly after that, according to authorities here in the Bahamas, that's when she started sending those text messages. And around that same time, there's a break-in at a local bar, Grabber's Bar. And that is where her boyfriend was working at the time as a bartender. So here, again in the Bahamas, things are a little bit different. Police were lining up individuals that worked at the bar, employees. They were going through their cell phones. And that's when uh, it's been reported that they discovered all of these text messages and this plot to kill Robert. The new reporting that's going about is out of the Daily Mail. They have a copy, they say, of the indictment. And that was circulated last Friday. She was in court last Friday. And part of that evidence includes this text messages where Lindsay claims that Robert put his hands on her during that plane fight that sparked it all, which uh, Bethel wrote this, I am about to come out of retirement for this. He is flying to Baker's Bay. She is thinking about letting me kill him, but he has the kids. The Daily Mail also reporting this uh, about the statement, a two page statement that Robert Shiver handed to police that's part of this indictment, and it includes this, a quote saying, he was living in fear of his petite 5.5-foot, uh, 3-inch wife. And when Bahamian authorities informed Robert of the alleged threat, he called his wife manipulating and speculated as to why she may want him out of the picture, saying that she had an affair with an 18-year-old about a year ago and snuck him into their house here in the Bahamas. And remember, Vinny, there's also the speculation that maybe, just maybe, there was an insurance policy involved in all of this. Insurance and um, a lot of money as well. Um, let, let's bring in uh, the rest of our guests that we have tonight. Uh, joining us in Tallahassee, Florida, private investigator and mitigation specialist Monica Jordan's with us. Also in Tallahassee, criminal defense attorney, former federal prosecutor Tim Jansen. And you're both in Tallahassee, which is very close to Thomasville, Georgia, where the Shivers were living. Uh, great to have you here. So, Monica, as you're investigating this and trying to figure out what exactly they were doing and communicating, um, how, much, how much more information? We're, we're hearing that there might have been some, some messages going back and forth. Um, where do you go from there? Well, ideally, I would I would like to be able to get all of the evidence that the government has. If they have a host of WhatsApp or text messaging between the parties, that, that's going to be very telling and potentially very damning for the defendant. 
I've often thought from the beginning of this case that uh, they had to have had more than just her sending a picture saying kill him because I think that could be considered just you know an aggravated wife. Um, they're in this terrible you know beginning of a pretty acrimonious divorce as most are and but it, it appears that there's a lot more to it and the fact that the boyfriend says I'm going to come out of retirement she wants me to kill him or she's going to let me kill him and gives the gives the location of when he's flying in boy that's really tough to overcome for the defense yeah Tim I'm, I'm looking at this evidence and it's not only communication like Lindsay to her lover kind of just like you know venting there's a third person involved. To me, that is the most important piece to all of this. I agree, Vinny. Uh, if you got a boyfriend and a lover venting about the ex-husband, why do you need this third party? Who's this person? He's the person that's going to commit the crime, that's going to build in a little buffer between you and the lover and the uh, intended target. Uh, you have to remember, Vinny, Conspiracy laws in, in the island is different than the United States. In the United States, you have to have an agreement and an overt act. In the Bahamas, you have to have either an agreement or an overt act. And what it sounds like they have here, they have both. They had an agreement, and then they had the overt act of sending the picture and identifying him and when he was coming in and then bringing in the third party to possibly handle the matter. Yeah, that is difficult. Now, Monica, I, we've heard, and again, we, we don't have a lot of information. She's claiming her innocence, not just saying not guilty, but claiming innocence. Um, how could she potentially argue that this was a joke of some sort? Like, where would you look for evidence to try to convince someone that this was a joke and this wasn't serious? Well, if she's spoken to law enforcement, she certainly hasn't convinced them of that or she wouldn't have been arrested. Uh, you know, Tim and I have done a lot of cases together and we haven't had any clients ever speak to law enforcement and talk themselves out of handcuffs. Uh, if this is going to trial in March, she's going to have to testify to explain that away, there, there, when you put forth a defense that uh, it was a joke, I'm sorry, I was kidding, this has been taken out of context, you really have locked yourself into a position where you have to um, testify, which is very unnerving for the, for the legal team because then that means the entire case is falling on the shoulders of the client who's gonna be very nervous and have all of these other you know questions thrown at him. Um, She's kind of painted herself in a corner with this, and I think the more the text messages come out, the the more the more hurdles her legal team's going to have with going to trial with with the uh, boyfriend and the um, you know the hired their potential solicited hitman trigger man. So, Tim, again looking at three defendants, right? So, is there some level of a potential unified a lot of times there's co-defendants they all want to point the finger at each other but right. I don't think this is that kind of case is it well you know Vinny I, I know you had Matt and I'm hearing rumors that Owen Wells is representing all three of them which would be unheard of that would clearly be a unified front but I didn't I heard Matt say the lawyers but I just I don't know if he's still on he can clarify did, the, did, did they have other lawyers? Did Bethel have a lawyer in Newbold? I only saw one w lawyer walk in with her, and I saw him walk in with looked like family members. Um, That's a significant, let's go to Matt. Let's go to Matt, it's a great point, Tim. Matt, any indication today inside the courtroom, outside, whether there's one legal team or separate legal teams? Right, and that's great. And we've been reporting that this morning and throughout the day that, yes, she does. And the whole, all three of them do have one attorney, Mr. Wells. But I also reported that he only made the statement on behalf of one client, which was Lindsay Shiver, when she proclaimed her innocence.
along with pleading not guilty. So right now you have three co-defendants who sit next to each other in court each and every day when they're in court, and they also have only one attorney. But uh, that could change as it goes higher up and when it's presented before, before a jury. Yeah, that, that again, that's a, it takes us back right here in the United States. That would never, ever, ever, ever happen. But that being said, Tim, um, unless one cuts a deal, right, and says, hey, I'll give you the inside information, I'll testify against you, give me some sort of reduced sentence or reduced charges or just set me free, um, that gets a little more complicated when there's only one lawyer there, Tim. Well, it does. And, and it, even when you have multiple lawyers, you can have joint defense agreements that sometimes hold and sometimes don't. But this case, the Crown, the Crown prosecutor should be getting involved and saying, hey, who's representing these people at this stage asking for a trial? You know, Vinny, I, I did some research on the trials in the Bahamas. Normally, the, the normal waiting period is three years. They're getting this trial in seven months. So I would, I would think the court, the Crown would try to inquire who's representing these people and if there's a, a, a conflict, is it a waivable conflict? Because you're right, if you have one lawyer, no, no, they, they can't. You can't, be, you can't have allegiance to three different people. This is unreal. Now, uh, Monica, in trying to get, trying to understand the relationship and everything that was happening here, right? She looks bad at this point, right? Because she's got the Bahamian lover yes. and his jet and everything else. Um, do you suspect that the backstory of the relationship could be relevant to everything that's happening here? And maybe there's something to dig up there, whether it's down in the Bahamas or, you know, close to Tallahassee over there in Thomasville, Georgia. I think both, Vinny. What concerns me the most is that the, the soon-to-be ex-husband, Mr. Shiver, is alleging that there was a, a prior relationship. Uh, and almost all of the murder-for-hire cases that I've worked on for the defense where uh, a spouse tries to hire somebody to kill the spouse they're trying to divorce. When they're having relationships outside of their marriage, they don't, it, typically it's not the first person they ask or the first affair they're having that they ask to kill the spouse. I, I would be very interested to know if she asked this 18 year old or is, is, is uh, these two in the Bahamas the first two that she's asked. The Tim other issue with Go ahead. that is just is that typically when you conspire to do something you, you you want the other parties to have as much to lose or more than you do so they won't turn on you and in this situation she's got everything in the world to lose and she including her children and her social status in georgia and and all the accoutrements that come along with the socioeconomic lifestyle that they have but more importantly she's aligned herself with two guys that really don't have that much to lose. 